This week our gospel reading comes again from Mark chapter 1 verses 21 through 28. They went to Capernaum and when the Sabbath came Jesus entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Just then there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed, and they kept on asking one another, What is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. At once, his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. And this is the Gospel of the Lord. And this is Jesus' first ever act of ministry in Mark's gospel. He meets this man in the synagogue and casts an unclean spirit out of him. And we aren't told much about what this unclean spirit is. And uh, I would guess that most of us probably don't hear talk very often of unclean spirits in our own lives. It's not... Um, perhaps a very familiar uh, term to us to describe uh, our struggle. But here in this story, that is what this man is going through. And though we don't get a whole lot of details, I think we can make some guesses about how this unclean spirit would have been affecting this man. I think this spirit, this struggle internally, would have made him feel out of control and powerless I'm sure he felt like he was not himself. He probably had a sense of hopelessness. And I'm sure he must have felt alone as well, especially if uh, other people in his community kept their distance from him because of the struggle he was going through. Have you ever faced any of those feelings in your own life? Feeling like you're not yourself? Feeling alone? Feeling hopeless? We may not experience uh, what we would call possession by a spirit, but we do experience, I think, many of the similar kinds of struggles that this man faced that were uh, making him feel um, stuck and desperate. But the good news that this story reminds us of is that Jesus came to set us free from all of those things that make us feel stuck and alone and not ourselves. So in this story, he, Jesus, sets this man free by calling this unclean spirit to come out of the man and immediately it does and he gets a new, fresh start on his life. Likewise, Jesus has the power to set us free as well from all of those things that hurt us and weigh us down. And it may not be the case that we suddenly experience uh, that we are free from all of those struggles. Sometimes that happens, but sometimes, as you know, we may have uh, struggles off and on throughout our lives with some of those things, kids and adults. Um, but we know that Jesus is with us in all of our times of struggling and that Jesus um, wants us to be free and wants us to be whole. And in fact, he has power and not any of these other um, difficulties that, that may hurt us. So uh, if you would, we'll join in a prayer. Dear Jesus, you are our friend, our companion, with us in all of our struggles, and we know that you have power, even when it feels like our struggles and our difficulties have so much power over us. In fact, uh, it is you who has the power to send away uh, the, the voices, the spirits, the difficulties, whatever we may call them, that, that hurt us and make us feel alone. We know that we are never, in fact, alone. We thank you for your authority over all things in this world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Good evening, everyone. How are all of you today? So I wanted to share with you an idea that I'm also sharing with you today on our um, Facebook page that came from this book called Faithful Families. Some ideas I started to shave about, share with all of you about some traditions and rituals and things like that that we can do in our homes that help us to build our faith and grow in our faith together. But talking about um, listening to Pastor Gina today um, and her message, I was thinking about some of my own demons. And one of those things that um, I struggle with in the demons that God doesn't want me to have on my heart and my, my, on my mind are my worries. A lot of times my worries lead to negative thoughts and my negative thoughts lead me um, down thought pathways that, um, that aren't necessarily kind or true to myself and not at all what God has in mind for me. Do you ever do that? Well, one thing that helps me to um, kind of um, calm my demons and to think more about um, the things that God wants me to have on my heart and in my mind are, are um, the things I'm thankful for and the grateful the things I'm grateful for. And so the activity that I shared today on our um, in our on our website and on our Facebook page was um, an idea from Faithful Families called the Gratitude Cafe. So I thought I'd just kind of walk through that with you. Like, I'm going to do that. And I'm going to pretend like you're my family tonight because you are my church family. And um, so, you know, you would come together. The instructions for this, like I said, are on the website and, um, and on our social media page. But I'm just going to kind of have a, gra a gratitude cafe with you. So it's a cafe. So I brought some of my coffee with me. And you could provide any beverage you want in your family. Um, when you come together, you know, cocoa, coffee, whatever it's, um, maybe there's another beverage that you prefer. And so, you know, you pick a time once a week or once a month or whatever, whatever time works for you and your family. And so this is our time together for our gratitude cafe. Um, there's so many things in the world that we're in our lives and in our world that God's, God gives us to be thankful for. So let's take a minute and let's either write down five things that we could be grateful for, the air we breathe, the things in our life, the people, the actions, the feelings, whatever that might be. You can write it down in words or you can draw pictures. Let's just take five minutes to do that. Not sure if you've had time, but let's share. So my five things that I'm really grateful for, just right now today, my pups, Bo, Weldy, Belle, and Hazel Grace. They love me unconditionally and they're always there for me. Another thing is our, I was just thinking about the feelings I had last night when I went to, had dinner with a friend and the conversations we had, you know, I had great feelings afterwards that um, just I'm holding on to those good feelings today. I'm thankful for that. Um, the love from my Aunt Marilyn. My Aunt Marilyn called yesterday and I hadn't talked to her for a long time and I just thought, man, am I lucky to be loved by my Aunt Marilyn and boy, do I love her. I also saw some Trinity, um, a Trinity family last night um, and I got to see him and I missed him and that was a really cool thing. It brightened my whole week. And as it's getting colder and colder today, I'm really thankful to have heat in my home. What are you thankful for? What are the five things you put down for, for our gratitude cafe? 
So after everyone has shared, um, you will just end in a prayer and you can make that prayer up or you can use something just as simple as this. God, we are thankful for all of these blessings. Amen. So I hope that this has given you an idea of, you know, ways that God helps us um, to fight against those demons that come up in our own thoughts, like worries. Um, one way to conquer the worry demon is to think about all the things that we have to be thankful for. And by doing um, the Gratitude Cafe with our families, that's one way to conquer some worry and spend time together as a family and grow in our faith together. I hope you have a really great night and rest of your week, and we'll see you next week. Bye, everyone.